welcome my dear learners for this course on heat transfer so far in this final module we were discussing on heat exchangers where in which we have completed our discussion on logarithmic mean temperature difference method of analyzing the heat exchanger now in today's lecture let us discuss effectiveness and ntu method of analyzing the heat exchanger this effectiveness and ntu method of analyzing the heat exchanger is employed whenever the exit temperature of both hot and cold fluids are not known to us so in today's lecture let us discuss effectiveness and ntu method of analyzing the heat exchanger that is effectiveness which is noted by epsilon and ntu ntu stands for number of transfer units ntu stands for number of transfer units now effectiveness is of an heat exchanger is defined as the effectiveness of an heat exchanger to transfer heat now the definition of effectiveness is given as first this method is employed this method is used whenever the exit temperature of whenever the exit temperature of both hot and cold fluids are not known whenever we know one of the exit temperature and both the inlet temperature of hot and cold fluids through heat balance we can find the unknown temperature one unknown temperature thereby we know all the four temperatures and we can use logarithmic mean temperature difference method whereas the logarithmic mean temperature difference technique depends on all the four temperature that is hot fluid inlet hot fluid exit cold fluid inlet and cold fluid exit whenever the exit temperature of both hot and cold fluids are not known then we employ effectiveness and ntu method now the definition of effectiveness is effectiveness of an heat exchanger is defined as actual heat transfer actual heat transfer from an heat exchanger to the maximum possible heat transfer maximum possible heat transfer from an heat exchanger that is epsilon is equal to q actual divided by q max now the actual heat transfer can be defined for hot fluid as well as it can be defined for cold fluid so therefore for hot fluid if i take for hot fluid the effectiveness of an heat exchanger based on hot fluid is written as mass flow rate of hot fluid into cp of hot fluid times hot fluid loses heat so it is thi minus tho it is the heat loss by hot fluid divided by c minimum so maximum possible heat transfer is given by c minimum times thi minus tci thi minus tci if you observe we have only one exit temperature that is hot fluid outlet temperature so therefore by knowing the effectiveness of the heat exchanger and the inlet temperatures and the mass flow rate and specific heat i can find what is the exit temperature of hot fluid similarly if i write for cold fluid for cold fluid effectiveness of an cold fluid is written as m dot c specific heat of cold fluid cpc times cold fluid gains heat so therefore it is tco minus tci 
divided by c minimum times thi minus tca so the maximum possible heat transfer is the heat transfer that can takes place from a counter flow heat exchanger of infinite area of an infinite area that will gives us the maximum possible heat transfer which is given by c minimum thi minus tci where c minimum is the minimum heat capacity rate c minimum is minimum among ch and cc this we have already discussed that is heat capacity rate of hot fluid and heat capacity rate of cold fluid that is ch is again defined as m dot h cph heat capacity rate and cc is given as m dot c cpc heat capacity rate of cold fluid so minimum among these two is the c minimum times the inlet difference of hot and cold fluid will gives us maximum possible heat transfer so if i know effectiveness of a heat exchanger i can find what is the actual heat transfer from the heat exchanger once i know what is the actual heat transfer from the heat exchanger i can determine exit temperature of the fluid which is unknown for us now if you carefully observe epsilon depends on many parameters like mass per rate of hot fluid or mass per rate of cold fluid or you can state it as heat capacity rate of hot and cold fluid and the temperatures in order to compare the heat exchangers i can represent epsilon using a dimensionless term that is epsilon can also be defined as it is a function of ua by c minimum times c minimum by c maximum now the term ua by c minimum is defined as number of transfer units now i will define a parameter called number of transfer units that is number of transfer units so number of transfer units will give an idea of size of an heat exchanger higher the value of number of transfer units closer will be the heat exchanger working in its thermodynamic limit so number of transfer units is a non dimension term or dimensionless term which is given by ntu is equal to ua by c minimum you can observe the units that is u u into a is nothing but watt per kelvin right watt per kelvin because q is equal to ua delta t so therefore ua is equal to q divided by delta t watt per kelvin whereas c minimum is nothing but the product of specific heat and the mass flow rate so mass flow rate is kg per second specific heat is kilojoules per kg kelvin so you can cancel of kg and kg kilojoules per second can be written as kilowatts let me write it as kilowatts per kelvin right so what i'll get i'll get kilowatts per kelvin divided by kilowatts per kelvin so cancels of so therefore ntu is dimensionless hope you understood now this will gives us the size of heat exchanger and this is a dimensionless term hence determine the value of ntu i can compare the heat exchangers now i can derive the expression for epsilon and ntu now if you carefully observe ntu depends only on overall heat transfer coefficient surface area and heat capacity rate and i can relate ntu with epsilon so epsilon is a function of ntu and c, c minimum by c max so thereby without using the temperature i can determine what is the effectiveness so once i determine what is the effectiveness of an heat exchanger i can use the definition of effectiveness of heat exchanger and find the exit temperature of hot and cold fluid so this is the significance of effectiveness and ntu method so with this very brief introduction to effectiveness and ntu method of analyzing the heat exchanger in this lecture let me derive an expression for effectiveness ntu relation for parallel flow heat exchanger 
Now, moving ahead to analyze heat exchanger using effectiveness and NTU method. Let me derive an expression for epsilon NTU for parallel flow heat exchanger that is parallel flow heat exchanger. So for a parallel flow heat exchanger, if I consider let me have a heat exchanger arrangement like this where in which both hot and cold fluid will move in the same direction let us have hot and cold fluid moving in the same direction So let me consider this as cold fluid inlet, cold fluid exit. Here let me consider movement of hot fluid, hot fluid outlet, hot fluid inlet. Now if I draw the temperature profile over this heat exchanger, that is parallel flow heat exchanger, I will have a temperature profile like this. So this is temperature, variation of temperature over length, variation of temperature over length, whereas the hot fluid loses heat over the length, whereas cold fluid gains heat over the length. So both move in the same direction. So here I have hot fluid inlet, which loses heat, here I have hot fluid outlet. Here I have cold fluid inlet TCI, it gains heat, this is TCO. So let me have a margin for that. So this is a length of heat exchanger. And let me consider an elemental length dx at a length x from the left end. Like this, let me consider elemental length dx for analysis and integrate it over the length n. let the elemental length is at a distance x from the left end. So here the temperature difference can be written as delta T2. Delta T2 is the temperature difference of THO and TCO. And delta T1 is the temperature difference of THI minus TCI. Let me take this as delta T1. And let here in the elemental length the bulk temperature be TH and TC. Bulk temperature of fluids can be taken as hot fluid temperature and cold fluid temperature. Let this difference be considered as delta T. Delta T is the bulk temperature difference of hot and cold fluid in this elemental length dx. Now if I write temperature difference for this element that is hot fluid in this elemental length so it is losing heat so therefore exit minus inlet will give us minus dth so if I take here TCO is greater than TCI in this elemental length so therefore this difference will be positive dtc plus dtc here i have minus dth here i'll get plus dtc let me write it more clearly this difference if I take I will get negative because hot fluid is losing heat minus dth whereas for cold fluid it is plus dtc because cold fluid is gaining heat. Now you have to derive the expression I should 
define the various terms let us define the terms first that is let very first thing is the mass flow rate right so therefore let me define mass flow rate first let m dot c and m dot h is equal to mass flow rate mass flow rate of cold and hot fluids unit will be kg per second next we have temperatures thi and tho this is nothing but temperature that is inlet and exit inlet and exit temperature inlet and exit temperature of hot fluid similarly we have tci and tco that is inlet and exit temperature of cold fluid what else we have specific heat rate so that is cpc and cph is cold and hot fluid specific heat so this will be in kilojoules per kg k then we have heat capacity rates right that is cc and ch cc and ch which is given by m dot c cpc and m dot h cph this is called as what heat capacity rates heat capacity rate heat capacity rate of cold and hot fluids respectively unit will be just now we have calculated it will be watt per kelvin watt per kelvin so just now when i demonstrated ntu is dimensionless we have found out heat capacity rate will be watt per kelvin or kilowatt per kelvin next temperature differences we have right delta t1 is given by what delta t1 is thi minus tci delta t2 is tho minus tco and delta t is th minus tc hope i have defined all the terms now let us derive the expression as i said first let us consider the elemental length dx and analyze it once i get the result for elemental length i'll integrate over the entire length of the heat exchanger so therefore considering the elemental length dx consider elemental length dx at a distance x at a distance x as is shown in the figure as is shown in the figure now for this elemental length dx i can write rate of heat transfer q that is dq can be written as u da delta t right overall heat transfer coefficient times the elemental area times the temperature difference let us take this as equation number 1 where delta t is what th minus tc take it as equation 
Now, in this elemental length, in this elemental, in this elemental length, what is the heat lost by hot fluid? That is heat lost by hot fluid is given by what? Heat lost by hot fluid is minus CH DTH. Correct? M dot H CPH DTH. Whereas DTH is negative because it is losing heat. M dot into CP is nothing but heat capacity rate. Therefore, it is minus CH DTH. So similarly, heat gained by cold fluid can be written as what plus cc dtc plus cc dtc right so therefore i can write dth as therefore dth is equal to minus dq by ch take it as equation 3 from this equation dq is equal to minus ch dth right so therefore dth is dq by ch similarly dtc can be written as what dq by cc take it as equation 4 So this is heat lost by hot fluid. This is nothing but dq. This is nothing but dq. Now dq, dth is dq by minus ch. dtc is dq by plus cc. Now consider equation 2 and differentiate. Differentiating equation 2. differentiating equation 2. So if I differentiate equation 2 what I will get differential of delta t is equal to dth minus dtc. Now substitute the value of dth and dtc from equation 3 and 4. So dth can be written as minus dq by ch. So therefore d of delta t is equal to minus dq by ch minus dq by cc minus dq by cc now i'll take minus dq common so d of delta t can be written as minus dq of 1 by ch plus 1 by cc now substitute the value of dq from equation 1. Now from equation 1, what you can write? So from equation 1, I can write d delta t is equal to minus u d a delta t u d a delta t times 1 by ch plus 1 by cc correct now I'll rearrange the term that is if I rearrange the term I'll have d of delta t by delta t is equal to minus u of 1 by ch plus 1 by cc times da now if i integrate we have integral is from 1 to 2 for delta t d of delta t by delta t is equal to minus u of 1 by ch plus 1 by cc 
integral integral of area is from zero to overall area a into da. Now if I integrate, I'll get integral integral of this is this is of the form one by x. One by x is log x. So therefore I'll get ln of delta t limit is from one to two is equal to minus u integral of da is a limit is from zero to a so therefore i'll get u into a times one by ch plus one by cc so this can be written as what ln of delta t2 by delta t1 that is ln delta t2 minus ln delta t1 log a minus log b is log of a by b so therefore i can write it as ln of delta t2 by delta t1 is equal to minus u a times 1 by ch plus 1 by cc so if i take ln that side it will become e to the power now i know what is the value of delta t2 and delta t1 delta t2 is tho minus tco that is tho minus tco divided by delta t1 is thi minus tci thi minus tci this is equal to e to the power of minus ua times 1 by ch plus 1 by cc 1 by ch plus 1 by cc let us take this as equation number what so we have 4 let us put it as equation number 5 now if you carefully observe we have hot fluid exit temperature and cold fluid exit temperature our aim of using effectiveness and NTU method is used whenever we don't know exit temperature of both the fluids correct so therefore now eliminate THO and TCO how to eliminate THO and TCO bring in effectiveness so just now we have discussed what is the definition of effectiveness use the definition of effectiveness for hot and cold fluid bring in effectiveness by replacing THO and TCO so let us do that if I do that that is if I eliminate THO and TCO by using definition of effectiveness what I am going to get so we have for hot fluid For hot fluid, effectiveness is given by CH THI minus THO by C minimum times THI minus TCI. Correct? So, therefore, what is the value of THO? THO will become what? THO will be. THO will be THI minus THI minus epsilon times C minimum by CH times THI minus TCA correct so take this as equation number six so similarly for cold fluid for cold fluid we have epsilon is equal to cc times tco minus tci divided by c minimum of thi minus tci right so therefore what is the value of tco tco will be tci plus tci plus epsilon times c minimum by cc thi minus tci take this as equation number seven now use equation six and seven and eliminate th1 and tco in equation 5 so substituting 
substituting equation 6 and equation 7 in equation 5 what you will get THO minus TCO so take the difference of these two directly equation 6 minus equation 7 so if I take the difference of these two and substitute there directly I will get THI minus TCI that is THO minus TCO is THI minus TCI THI minus TCI we have minus THO minus TCO so minus epsilon C minimum by CH I can take epsilon THI minus TCI common right so I can take epsilon so both have THI minus TCA, THI minus TCA. So therefore, I can take it common. THI minus TCA common if I take what I left out with. C minimum by CH plus C minimum by CC. That is what I will get for THO minus TCA. THO minus TCI is THI minus TCI minus epsilon C minimum CH THI minus TCI minus epsilon C minimum CC THI minus TCI epsilon THI minus TCI I have taken common so now I left out with C minimum by CH since I have taken minus common minus of minus minus into plus will become minus C minimum by CC correct divided by THI minus TCI so this divided by THI minus TCI this must be equal to this must be equal to e to the power of minus UA times 1 by CH plus 1 by CC 1 by CH plus 1 by CC so equation 5 is done so I eliminated THO and TCO from equation 5 right so now I can take THI minus TCI common right so if I take THI minus TCI common and cancel off I left out with 1 minus epsilon times C minimum by CH plus C minimum by CC is equal to e to the power of minus UA 1 by CH plus 1 by CC. Now to simplify further let us consider CH as C maximum and CC as C minimum let us consider CH as C maximum and CC as C minimum and C as C minimum by C max that is CC by CH let us assume these things so these things are necessary for further simplification now substitute these assumptions here what I will get 1 minus epsilon C minimum by C max C minimum by CH is C max C minimum by C max is defined as C plus C minimum by CC CC is again C minimum C minimum C minimum cancel it will become 1 this is equal to e to the power of minus u a i will take c c common because u a by c minimum is n t u 
times so since i take on cc outside it will become cc by ch plus 1 right so i want epsilon i want expression for epsilon so therefore if i send epsilon to right hand side i'll get 1 minus e to the power of minus ua by c minimum times c plus 1 is equal to send this to that side it will become positive epsilon times c plus 1 c plus 1 so therefore what is the value of epsilon so therefore epsilon for parallel flow epsilon for parallel flow will become 1 minus e to the power of minus ntu of 1 plus c whole divided by 1 plus c so this is the expression for effectiveness for parallel flow so this is the relationship between effectiveness and ntu for parallel flow heat exchanger so with this once i know ntu i can find what is the value of effectiveness once i know what is the value of effectiveness using the definition for hot and cold fluid i can find hot fluid exit and cold fluid exit temperature so in this lecture we have discussed the definition of effectiveness and ntu and also we have derived effectiveness ntu relation for parallel flow heat exchanger in our next lecture i will take up effectiveness ntu relation for counter flow heat exchanger that's all from this lecture thank you all